Welcome back. In today's episode we're going to fit some USB power points and some USB powered LED light strips up here in the pop top roof bed which currently has no power and no lighting other than battery powered fairy lights. So this is what the lights will look like once I've finished. Let me talk you through how I made them. You all know how I love using up bits of random offcuts and junk hanging around our house. Well, here we go again. I've used some of the black fireproof Corex board left over from the kitchen cupboard tidy project and an underbed storage drawer project, which I'll hopefully bring you at some point in the future. I haven't edited that footage yet. And a bit of old Perspex, which actually used to be a shed window, believe it or not and some aluminium tape which was left over from when we fitted the wooden flooring in the lounge. I've had to buy, yes really, two one metre long USB powered LED strips because I didn't have any of those hanging around but I did have some spare sticky back velcro to hand and that will attach the whole lot to the ceiling of the pop top roof bed. Step number one is to get everything scrupulously clear. These materials have been hanging around in the garage so they're covered in sawdust and all sorts of rubbish so I've already washed them down with uh, soap and warm water but uh, they're also prone to a lot of static and so pick up huge amounts of dust even after they've been washed hence cleaning them again now with these lovely lemon scented anti-static dusters. The LED strips are self-adhesive but rather than just stick them onto the velcro and then onto the ceiling I want to protect them and make things a little bit prettier by sticking the LEDs to this black Corex board then capping the whole assembly with the perspex and then encasing the whole thing in aluminium tape and only then putting sticky back velcro onto the, the whole assembly so it can be attached um, to the velour ceiling in the sleeping area. So at first I cut the base Corex board to size then using a rechargeable power pack double check the lights again they're working fine, so having carefully marked out the baseboard, I stick the LED strip in place and then a thinner Corex strip on each side. This will ensure that the Perspex sits flat and just above the LEDs themselves. I'm using a really strong automotive double-sided tape here because this stuff creates a phenomenally firm bond and can cope with the vibrations from being driven around in extremes of hot and cold that it's likely to face stuck just underneath that ceiling. I'm sure it's complete overkill for this project, but it's what I've got available. The one thing I should mention now is that uh, we were limited by the size of the Perspex available, which incidentally we cut to size on the table saw with a fine tooth blade, but we still got a bit of edge breakout. And in hindsight, I should have cut some of the LEDs off the end of the strip uh, to mean that the connection itself, so where the cable connects to the LED strip, was better supported, because that does feel a bit like the weakest part of the design. It's still holding up after a few months, but if I were to build it again, I would definitely make the whole strip longer or, or certainly the LED strip shorter so that that particular connection got a lot more support. Now comes the most tricky part, which isn't really tricky at all, and that's keeping the whole assembly together whilst putting the perspex into place and, the, and, and then aluminium taping everything together. The easiest and tidiest way to do this is by attaching small bits of tape to the short edges. They can then hold everything in place and then putting the long pieces into place afterwards. The last step is to stick the self-adhesive hook side of the velcro into place and then we're all done. All I've done here is push the light strip onto the ceiling and because of those hooks in the velcro it stays in place and then plugged it into this new USB outlet. We've installed one of these on each side of the roof bed so that each boy has a fast charge and a normal socket. They're daisy chained so the cable from this side goes around the roof bed perimeter hidden under this rubbery trim and into the other socket. Each socket switch because as you know USB points draw a tiny bit of power at all times because of course they have a 12 volt to 5 volt transformer built in and we don't want them to ever so slowly drain the leisure battery and as an easy on off uh, for the lights as well because there's of course no inline switch. From here the cable goes down into the wardrobe and into the existing trunking and down into our 12 volt management system. If I can manage to show you that one handed, whilst trying not to rock the camera too much in the other hand. 
Luckily, there were a couple of spare fused connections available here on the distribution board when we bought the caravan. So these USBs and a couple of combined 12 volt and USB banks which sit on the front bulkhead, which I'll show you in another video, um, share a suitable circuit. And then we also fitted some additional bright USB task lighting downstairs, and that's on another circuit. Incidentally, uh, natural light is, is, I guess, the other thing that this caravan could do much better. Because we have this massive roof bed, we have just one tiny skylight, so it can be quite gloomy in here, hence the need for lots of extra lighting, as we don't want to restrict ourselves to just midsummer camping, otherwise we might as well own a tent. So that's the electrical connection for the sockets, and here's how we, well, that on a mission really, made the boxes themselves. Using some 9mm birch ply off cuts, he built a couple of bottomless cubes, which have just enough room inside for the sockets and the wiring then rounded over the edges with my trim router and drilled a couple of holes in each for the socket and the switch. Then it was over to me for finishing. I used the same finish that I used on the new slimline downstairs table, an ebony wood die followed by a hard shell varnish. Then how to attach the boxes to the caravan. So we used the same automotive super strong double sided tape that I talked about earlier. The edges up here are the aluminium shell of the caravan and so there was absolutely no way I wanted to be drilling into that. So there we go, upstairs USB power and lighting. I hope you enjoyed following along with this little mod. Please do give it a thumbs up if you did. It really helps our little channel to grow. And likewise, please do subscribe to follow more of our mods, makes and mini adventures. Bye for now.